In this lesson, we're going to talk about the functionality of conditional access, MFA, and SSO. I already mentioned the term conditional access and this SSO capability. I previously drew the idea that we have our Azure AD tenant for our organization, and we had the idea that there are accounts either created in the cloud or they were synchronized from on-premises. And I talked about the idea that, well, with Azure AD and centralizing that identity, it also gives us a single point to not only secure the identity, but specify controls around, well, what is required to be able to use all the applications that trust my Azure AD instance. So we have this idea of this nice protective conditional access. And this is through the creation of policies. And what these policies do is basically I set conditions that need to be met based on the criteria of the specification of the particular policy. So I could target a particular, remember, I've got all these different applications trusting my Azure AD tenant for its authentication and authorization. So I could target all cloud applications, a particular cloud application. I could target, hey, this group of users from this location, if they're on this type of device, if there's a certain risk. So I have all these different things that I can match and filter on for if this policy applies. And then I have the conditions that they need to meet. That condition could be focused around maybe the device they're using. Is it known and healthy to the Azure AD? Did they perform multi-factor authentication, which we'll get to? And maybe things like, well, what is their risk? There's all these different elements. So if we go and actually look at a conditional access policy, this will all get much clearer. So this is part of Azure AD. So I go to my Azure AD tenant. I'm going to go down to my security. And then under security, I can see my conditional access. So if I go to conditional access, here I have a whole list of policies that I've already created. Now notice there is the idea of things like named locations. So I can create actual locations based on sets of public facing IP addresses, or even things like countries and even GPS coordinates. So if I look at name locations for a second, hey, I could create a country's location and I could determine that by IP address or by GPS coordinates if it's a mobile device, or I can just specify a list of IP ranges. I can create PDF documents, which could be terms of use that can be shown and presented that they have to accept before they could access a certain application. But ultimately, we create a policy. And if I just say create a new policy, you give it a name, and then you target, hey, I want to target maybe all users, maybe select users, maybe it's certain roles within my Azure AD, and I can exclude certain people. I can target particular applications. So once again, we could target all cloud applications, we could exclude them. I can also apply it to certain types of actions. If I say select apps, well then we see all the different applications that have been added to my Azure AD tenant. So this could be third party applications, it could be ones I've written. There are certain built in ones just about Azure itself. For example, Azure Linux VM sign-in, Windows sign-in, Azure Batch, Azure Management, i.e. the portal itself. So I can target a particular application. I might see things like Office 365 Exchange Online. Then I specify, well, when does this apply? So I could say, well, if the user's risk, and this is using identity protection, a P2 feature, hey, if I'm detecting the user's risk is high, medium, the individual sign-in attempt, I'm detecting something risky about this particular interaction. I could target, hey, well, what platform are you running on? I could target particular locations. I could target particular client applications, and I could even pick particular device states. So I have all these different things, and I can even filter devices, that I can control, well, when does this policy apply? 
And then if it applies, well, I could either block access or more likely I'll grant it and I can say, yeah, but I want you to perform, for example, multi-factor authentication, or maybe it's marked as compliant by something like Intune. Maybe it has to be joined and registered to my Azure AD and my AD environment. Maybe it has to be an approved application. I want them to change their password. I have to accept a certain terms of use that I have created. And I can also say, well, out of all those controls, do they require to meet all of them or just one of them. For example, I might have controls that say, hey, either you have to use multi-factor authentication or the device has to be marked as compliant. I just wanna do something to make sure, hey, that device is healthy. So conditional access is all about when I'm trying to be authorized to use a certain cloud application, it will go through conditional access, work out which policies apply, and I have to meet those conditions. So one of those was MFA, multi-factor authentication. Now, MFA is all about the idea of strong authentication. We said the password is not something we like on its own. So MFA is based around that idea that we said there were different ways we can prove who we are. Remember there was something we know, i.e. a password, or maybe something like a pin, or a gesture. Maybe it's something we are. We talked about, remember, biometric. Or it could be something we have. And that's where we talked about the idea where it could be some kind of hardware token. It could be my phone running a certain authenticator application. It could even be my PC. My PC has that TPM in it, and I can use things like Hello for Business. So the point of multi-factor authentication is I want two or more of these. I don't want just one, I want a strong authentication. And you can combine these with the idea of, hey, maybe I have the authenticator app running on my phone. Well then, that's something I have. I have the phone with the app on it. And to get to the app, I probably have to unlock the phone. So it's maybe saying I am, I use a biometric to unlock my phone, or it's something I know, I have a pin to unlock my phone if it's hello for business and it's the TPM. So it's saying I have that particular machine and I have to unlock the machine. I type a pin or again, maybe it's some kind of biometric, a fingerprint or that 3D facial scan. So MFA is about strong authentication by having two or more of those particular things. And I typically wanna drive that from conditional access. We don't like just turning MFA on and making users do it on every single authentication. They'll get muscle memory and just always accept it. Always do it. We want to instead target it that, hey, I'm accessing a sensitive application or even maybe sensitive data within an application. I'm detecting some heightened risk. At that point, it's something maybe a little bit out of the ordinary. We want the user to be shaken. I said, oh, I'm being prompted for MFA. Hmm, they're gonna focus on that because it's not something they're doing every hour. And then if they do get prompted, they're really gonna think about, well, did I do something or is something bad happening somewhere that's making that happen. So MFA is a licensable feature with Azure AD Premium P1 and above. Now that lets me use all the different forms of MFA. So the preferred one is kind of the authenticator application. It has a number of other benefits. It acts as a broker for tokens and that's let me notify, there's different forms I can use that. But I can also do things like, well, an SMS message, I can get a call, there's other hardware tokens I can use, there are different things I can leverage. Also, if I'm just a global admin on an Azure AD tenant, I can do those things. If I turn on, there's just a standard, there's a security default, so if I turn on security defaults on my tenant, i.e. I'm not using P1 or P2 enhanced licenses, then all users get MFA, but I don't have any control, I'm not using conditional access, it's what Azure considers a heightened type of interaction, and it's using the Authenticator app. 
That's my only choice. So if I'm doing the security defaults, which is that free option, I can do MFA for my users, but it's only the Authenticator app. Or I can use Azure AD Premium P1, P2, and they come as part of other licenses as well. I get the full conditional access driven MFA. Um, Office 365 also offers some MFA capabilities focused around um, Office 365 applications. Now, I also mentioned before the idea of the user, hey, I don't want them constantly getting prompted for every app they access. Ideally, what happens is at the start of the day, they're on their kind of machine and they perform some authentication using their identity. At that point on, if they then go and access other applications, I don't want them to get prompted again. So what's happening behind the scenes is we're getting this single sign-on experience. Also seamless sign-on. It depends on the exact workings of what's happening. But the experience for the end user is, yes, I authenticate once. So kind of at the start of the day, I authenticate to Azure AD. I get some tokens back of different types. And then through those, when I access other applications that trust the same Azure AD tenant, I don't get prompted again. It's gonna give me that single sign on experience, which is great for the user. Now, every time I access an application, that's a different authorization, which means it goes through conditional access. So if I authenticated, and then I try and access an application that the conditional access says, well, this is a, a heightened security application or heightened data, I actually need you to now do a strong authentication, it would prompt me for that MFA. So it can still add on if I did the basic authentication initially, and now the conditions are different. Maybe the condition is, hey, no, you can't access because you have to be from a hybrid joined device, or you have to be in a certain location. Those still apply, but single sign-on, it's all about the idea that, hey, I've authenticated, I don't wanna then get prompted to authenticate on every app, it's just gonna seamlessly get me connected through.